Hi, my name is Evan Custodio, and this is Haptic, a library for building microfuzzers in Turbo Intruder, or a fuzzing framework for Turbo Intruder. So back in March, I saw a tweet from Nafi that looked like this. It, com it just showed a, a, an image of normal intruder with a cluster bomb style of attack with uh, position payloads on both the method and the path. And this is typical if you want to brute force admin panel endpoints um, mutating it in different ways, while also for each mutation, testing a different HTTP method type. And I thought, well, I don't really use Intruder anymore. I kind of moved my workloads all the way to Turbo Intruder. What would this look like in Turbo Intruder? So the day, a day later, I, I wrote up about a hundred um, line Python gist that did the exact same thing um, and accomplished the exact same goal. The, but there was a couple of problems with this uh, implementation. One, the entire HTTP request is sort of hard coded into the Python because there isn't really a way to um, to use the original uh, HTTP payload that's given into Turbo Intruder while, and still keeping insertion tags um, or payload, payload uh, insertion tags. And so that got me sort of um, you know feeling unsatisfied and wanted to figure out well how do I add that type of functionality into Turbo Intruder? How do we add m multiple insertion payload insertion points but also be able to specify attacks not just sniper attacks but also cluster bomb style and uh, battering ram style attacks into Turbo Intruder? And so I went on the path to um, to building a library for for Turbo Intruder called Haptic. And so Haptic is a Python library, um, which gets embedded right into Turbo Intruder uh, jar file. It's not, it's not a uh, burp plugin at all. Um, and really, the only the, the way you enable it in your Turbo Intruder um, Python is basically to um, first line import it just like this from Haptic import you know star. And so it's it's easy as that to enable it. And the goals for this library. Uh, one are to get the same exact support of payload markers that we have in in traditional Intruder, um, but also to enable uh, Turbo Intruder to have the same type of attack types that are in traditional Intruder, like sniper, cluster bomb, battering ram. Um, and so I, I went off and I, I built this library, and as I was testing it um, to completion, I noticed some positive side effects from the library. First being it significantly reduced the Python code size and trade for actual readable Python. Um, it also created these portable fuzzers and testers. The, the Python that you'd write is actually, can actually be reused across um, HTTP types from the repeater. So you could send anything from the repeater and reuse sort of the same types of fuzzers that you've built. And also it enabled uh, easy structure aware fuzzing. And I'll explain what that is later in the presentation. So here's a basic example. Um, this is a full example, uh, about 20, 20 lines of code. Um, there's nothing more to it than really just this. Um, first, we enable the library by um, um, importing haptic by doing from haptic import star. And this will import all the different, or all the different haptic related um, classes, decorators, class decorators, and helper functions. The first thing you need to do is create a class. You can call it whatever you want. In this case, I call it test logic, but it must extend um, the transform class from Haptic. The transform class is what adds the nuts and bolts into um, your, your Haptic class. Um, and inside your Haptic class, um, you specify sort of test names um, and they all must start with test underscore. Um, whatever the name you want after the underscore um, is is up to you, and whatever you do name it, it will translate into these um, these tags right here. And so, in this case, I have test underscore h1, and if you notice in, in front of the method, I have um, what I call a, a logic decorator. It, it it places logic state logic into the test, and this specific one, this is probably the most popular one that I use, um, it's apply iteration five. And what this tells the method is that if you find the H1 tag in the HTTP request 
uh, create five test cases returning moose in its place, All right? So, so that's basically what that says. So if we look at the rest of the Python, it's normal turbo intruder boilerplate Python. We have the queue requests um, function and we have the handle response function. And so when you first click attack, the queue request function is executed. It builds a request engine. And then with that request engine, you need to issue out the tests. So to do that with Haptic, um, you basically take the class that you created with Haptic, in this case, it's test logic, and you instantiate an object. The, um, the, during instantiation um, in the constructor, the constructor receives the, um, the actual HTTP payload string with all the Haptic annotations. Um, and so with that, it creates an object. In this case, we call it test factory because it acts sort of like a test factory. And um, on the next, in the next uh, step, there's a, a loop here that sort of asks the question of, hey, for, or, or starts the, the question of, hey, for every test in test factory, uh, could you please create a test for me? Figure out all the tests, please, and, and let's go ahead and enqueue them into the engine. And so what happens here specifically with, with um, this test called H1, if you, if you look at, if you look at the get being so this uh, get request sort of being your your initial HTTP payload, you're going to be annotating it with this with this H1 tag around your payload of interest. And so what this sort of um, um, haptic uh, transform does is it replaces that entire tag plus what's inside the inner part of that tag with the literal moose it's shown there, and it and it does it for five tests. And that's exactly sort of what this what this, um, this snippet does. And this type of um, test, as simple as it looks right now, this type of framework is, is extremely powerful for uh, fuzzing different types of payloads into different areas of your HTTP requests. And in sort of the next, next few moments, I'll go through uh, different demos of how we do that. So here we have Turbo Intruder open with the Python uh, shown from the previous slide. Um, and in this Python, we have our test logic class with our test h1 tag. And so the way we apply this tag is we simply just go ahead and do plus h1 plus end. And then we can surround these tags anywhere in the payload. So for instance, I'm going to be targeting this car payload right here. And what this should do when we click attack is this will evaluate this test um, for five times as shown in apply iteration state logic, and it should return moose in place of car. So if we do that, and then we see that indeed type equals moose. Now, if we go ahead and we just return data, data is given to H1 um, through the tag. So anything that's inside the tag will be returned, will be placed into the H1 routine as data. So we can just return data back. If we do if we do that, it shows that we now have car and it replaces the whole transform with car. Um, we can go ahead and we can make this iteration number count any anything we want. We can make it five, we can make it 10, and it will go ahead and scale with that number. So now next, what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna show how we can sort of surround the data with different things. So for instance, um, because uh, this is a, an iterative transform. The state variable keeps track of which um, of the iteration count that this transform has. So, we if we do say string state dot iter, and we append it to the data, the attack, we'll see that we get car zero, car one, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And so this is being able to um, take the data in. Uh, through the tag and be able to manipulate it and return it back is um, a strong property of of haptic and what ma what makes it so powerful. Um, so so next one of the things we can do is you can you can pretty much add whatever amount you want for this iteration. So let's say we're asking for a million requests, but let's say we don't want to do a million requests. We want to stop at some number. So 
we can do something like this where we do where we go if state dot iter is greater than or equal to say 15 we can we can tell it to just stop right here and it won't go to a million requests instead it will stop right at the 15th request so using using the stop function is a good way to um, to basically bail out of a, a, a test series when some condition has been met. So next we'll take a look at um, some helper functions that we can use to mutate the data. So one of the helper functions that we have is Radamza. So as long as you've installed Radamza, um, if you're running Burp in Linux, um, and Radomza is installed in your path, or if you're running Burp in Windows and Radomza is install, st installed in your WSL, uh, it should work either way. I have not tested this on OS X. Uh, I'm not a big OS X fan, but it should work in OS X too. If not, um, let me know. So you can apply Radomza and it will mutate this. In fact, let's just go ahead and show how we can just move the tag around and to mutate something else. So we'll leave car alone, we'll go to the, the user agent and we'll try to mutate that for 10 tests. And we see here, as we move forward, Radomza is mutating the user agent. Another thing we can do, another helper function that we have is, um, the helper function is called random insert and index insert. So we'll show random insert first. Random insert will takes the data as the first argument. The next argument, it takes a list of different insert strings. So right now I'll just show one. So let's say we wanna insert ticks randomly um, inside of data. So what this will do is wherever we place this tag, let's place it at the host, so around the host now. It will randomly find a spot in this data tag and it will insert a random um, character that's in this list. Right now there's only one character, so it'll just put ticks in. So let's take a look at that. And then you see as I go down the list, it randomly places ticks. We could also do a index insert, which allows you to control the index. So let's say we don't want to randomly place ticks everywhere. Instead, we want to actually uh, walk the tick from the beginning to the end of the data string. So what we can do is we can use actually state.iter to get the iteration count, because that should go from zero to your iteration max. And we can put a high iteration max of say a thousand. What index insert will do is if your iteration count goes past the length of data that's inside of the tag, it will automatically bail out of the tag. So it, this won't go to a thousand. So let's take a look at that. Say it stops right at the 18th. And if we take a look at that, we see that the tick is walking across the host name, just like that. Um, another property of this is not just, um, you know, you could use multiple types of characters to insert or, or strings to insert. So let's say we want to insert um, 0a% percent and maybe 0d. And what will happen is um, as it walks across the entire string, it will randomly choose which one, which one of these three to insert. So if we see that again. We see that it's randomly choosing tick 0d and 0a. So far, we've only shown you the apply iteration logic decorator for our transforms. There are four other um, it, uh, decorator types that can be used with haptic that, that may be useful. The first one shown here is called apply range. And this works just like the Python range function, where you give a starting value, your, your end value, and your step. And your step can also be um, fractional. So you can go up in, in steps of, say, 0.1. And what happens is for every um, for every value that's produced, 
it will invoke a test with that value placed inside for for data. If you want the original data that's that your that's inside of the tag for this specific test, you can use self dot inner at any time to get the original inner data and mutate it along with the the range values that you're getting. Apply list uh, works the same way except for um, numbers. You get um, you you supply a Python list just like this, and each element of that list uh, creates a test and is placed into data. Uh, same with FileList, except with FileList, it opens up a file, uh, splits each line into an element, and then each element is placed into the transform as a data value. Um, apply payloads is a uh, is a a, um, a decorator that basically grabs a a prepackaged payload file that's packaged with Haptic. In this case, we have a whole bunch of payload files that that were gathered from burp um, specifically here we grab uh, a payload file i put here that's the the word list from dir search and for every word inside of the uh, dir search word list it gets supplied into h5 as data and then we can replace the extension identifier with whatever extension you want and that gets placed into to h5 and so um, previously we've shown the plus sign style attack so with the plus sign style attack, that's a, that's a sniper attack, and so with sniper, it'll just it just goes through the payload lists one at a time. So in this case, we have two um, H2 tags here, which is fine for the for the plus sign style attack. They, this you can have multiple multiple of these H2s called called out, and what will happen is um, the ID H the H2 tag at the ID will get evaluated first with any placed um, as the the value inside of type. And then null gets placed inside of ID, and then this H2 tag gets evaluated. And so since H2 is five tests, we should have a total of 10 tests here, which we do. And we see this goes from zero to four, and this goes from zero to four on the other parameter. If we wanted to, if we wanted to do a cluster bomb uh, style of attack, instead of the plus sign, we use a percent sign. And so we'll put a percent sign here, put a percent sign here, and you cannot use the same um, uh, uh, haptic transform. You have to use a different one because each transform keeps its own state and they're both being used at the same time. So in this case, we're gonna use H2 and H3. And so for every value, for every test value in H2, it will go through every value of H3. And so that would be um, uh, five tests multiplied by five tests. So it should be 25 tests in total. And there are. And you see as we go up from zero to five, zero to four, it goes through each value inside of the H3 tag. Um, and then the last attack type is the battering ram uh, slash pitchfork style, which is the number sign noted by the number sign here. And so what this does is it, it, it evaluates each of, the tag, each of the tags and places their value in parallel. So in this case, this is more pitchfork style because they, there are different payload sets being placed into their positions. So we go ahead, should be only five um, tests, but you see they have their individual um, tags evaluated and placed into the position. Um, one of the things you might notice is that as I was testing that this user agent's being mutated, that is another style of tag called a, um, a persistent transform. With persistent transforms, they're denoted by per underscore to start the to start the method, and you can place them anywhere. They contain no state and they prescribe no tests, so they only get evaluated with other tests, and they always get evaluated independent of those tests. So this is a good way to sort of just if you need to compute a hash or just perform just naive manipulation. Um, you can sort of add these persistent uh, transforms, and they don't they don't uh, affect the the state at all of, of the iterative tr iterative transforms. Lastly, this clone transform is used for uh, creating battering ram style attacks. So this attack right here is a pitchfork style because it's using two different payload sets. But how do we use the same payload set when you can't use the same tag twice? So what we do here is we use clone transform to copy or just uh, basically clone H3 into H3C. And now 
it'll use the same exact payload set. So we can go ahead and change this to um, H3C. And we have five tests, but we can see they're using a battering ram style uh, attack to use the, with the same exact payload for each position. So let's now go into a couple of advanced use cases for fuzzing with hap haptic. Uh, in this case, we we see two fields. One is a cookie message field that looks base 64 encoded, and we have a um, JSON structure with uh, four keys, which its payloads also look base 64 encoded. Now, if you were to just place Radamza or random insert at these values at this level, chances are you'd either be getting errors back from the base 64 decoder or the JSON deserializer at the application, and you wouldn't get very far in the logic path. What we can do with haptic is we can create transforms that um, understand the structure of the message we are fuzzing and try to get a layer deeper. So in the case of this cookie, we see that it's base 64 encoded. So we'll, we'll instead decode it, fuzz at that level, and then re-encode it. And in the case of this JSON structure, we see that it, we want to, we probably want to fuzz the values that are inside of these base 64 encoded um, keys. So first we have to deserialize the JSON structure, access all the keys, and decode the base 64, fuzz at that level, re-encode the base 64, and re uh, serialize the JSON structure. And so we can do that in pretty pretty small amounts of code here with two tags. The H1 tag takes the data, decodes it, performs a random insert, and then re-encodes it and sends it into the application. And in the case with JSON fuzz, it loads the data into a JSON deserializer. For every key uh, found in that JSON structure, it will decode the, the value in that key randomly insert a character from this list and then re-encode it back into that key location and then re-encode the entire um, JSON structure and send it back in. So let's, and, and both tags are now placed in the payload as um, a pitchfork style. So they'll both, they'll both execute in parallel. So let's see what we get. So we get 50, 50 different um, tests. We see they're mostly 51 words, except there's a couple that's 56. So if we take a look, we see indeed that all the base 64 values are getting manipulated. And we also see that the message is getting that insertion from the, from the H1 tag, random insert of a tick. When we see, when we go down to that message that's 56 bytes, or so 56 words, we see that we triggered an error at the key um, in the JSON structure labeled D that carrots aren't allowed in the D parameter. And so this is a good way to um, what's called structured aware fuzzing, where we understand the structure at one level deep or two level deep and uh, create a transform to fuzz at those deep levels. So now that you know a little bit about haptic, let's go back to Nafi's original example and my response to it. So the response to it was about 100 lines of uh, Python code written for Turbo Intruder that was pretty much unreadable or at least very difficult to, to, to handle. Um, here we've reduced it, the same exact uh, type of function down to 20 lines of Python code using haptic. Um, we have basically created position tags um, called method and path that uh, that uh, associate to these two transform functions. In this first transform fun transform function, we um, iterate through get, post, put, and patch for every payload that's found in the admins prepackaged uh, word list. So this would be number of tests will be four times the number of uh, entries in this in this word list. And so we put the method here and put the path there. And so if we can go ahead and and issue out the attack. We see that some of the stuff is hitting. Um, let's now use a uh, what's called a response decorator that's been added to Turbo Intruder to dedupe some of the responses. So go ahead and add unique size one, and this should dedupe all common responses and and leave only ones that that appear different. So here we go. We have uh, 404 not found. Um, we have a 405 method not allowed. Um, showing that there are some allowed methods, options, and put. 
and then we show we have it shows here that we found the admin panel using the the put method at slash admin slash so that's it thank you for watching this presentation on haptic thank you to all my friends at uh, hacktivitycon for inviting me here to give this talk um, everyone can now uh, go ahead and clone haptic it's here on uh, github on this uh, link shown here um, feel free to look through the examples folder i know a lot of the concepts i showed here today are pretty pretty advanced but i feel like if if you check out the examples and try to run through them you'll intuitively get sort of the the look and feel of of how to use the library um, if you haven't already uh, follow me on twitter at defparem and that's it thank you everyone